Well, first I'll start, we'll start with a song. Back in the 1990s, late 1990s, a friend of mine named Resta uh, started channeling songs from the angels. And she channeled 270 songs from the angels. So it turned into a pathway, uh, basically, from, to God, uh, through song. Like 270 songs. People could just, it's got all the metaphysics of the Chorus and Jesus and everything in every song. And so I thought this movie would be a good deep movie tonight, but I will play it. I don't know if it, does it have air, airplay? Yes. So if I could just go to JBL Party Box. Okay, so this song is from the Angels. And it's called Shadowland, and it's about this world. It's a world of shadows. Like if you go to a movie theater and you watch a movie that's projected, you're really just spending two hours watching <laughs> shadows. But the mind gives the meaning. That's why all the emotions come up, but it's basically just a screen of shadows. Uh, but we forget that we're watching a movie while we're watching the movie, and it seems like it's real. The shadows seem like they're real, like we're, we're immersed in them, we're there at the, at the scenes. So the angels uh, wrote a song called Shadowland. Shadows were in Shadowland And you can never understand Their shadow talk and shadow deeds Their shifting thoughts and shadow means they tell you all about their guts, how they are victims of this world. They search for other ghosts to blame, the ones who cause them so much pain in Shadowland, so sad and desolate. Shadowland, where well, are so It's a good warm-up song, it kind of puts, it's 
kind of almost like existentialism, if you know anything about philosophy, it's like existentialism, existentialism is, is really a dark philosophy, because it's basically saying what you see in this world is all that there is, and there is no God, and it's a bitter pill, so that's it. <laughs> no. But we have a teaching that's saying we have to go past the shadows to the light that's behind the shadows, and I, I always talk about those four lessons in the early part of the workbook, five, six, seven, eight. I'm never upset for the reason I think, means all throughout the day, anytime I'm irritated, annoyed, upset in any way, I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I see something that's not there. So that's definitely a hallucination. I'm upset because I'm hallucinating, is what he's saying in the next lesson, six. Seven, I see only the past. And eight, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. So that's why we have all these movies about unrequited love and find love to lose it, lose it and all kinds of uh, dark dramas and conflicts in the world is because it's all shadows. They aren't really occurring at all. I see something that's, that's not there. So it's hallucinating and not knowing you're hallucinating and then reading dark meaning onto the figures that are appearing. And it doesn't matter if you read something positive or negative, it makes them seem real. Even positive judgments of shadows make them seem real. That's why pain and pleasure, she mentioned guilt and sin, the bait they use to pull you in, even the ones that seem pleasurable and positive are just as much of keeping you from the light as the negative ones. So it's it's not just eliminating the negative and accepting the positive, it's seeing that they're both part of a deep, sinister plan to keep the mind asleep and dreaming, and unaware that this world has no reality. But she does say in the song, you know, they will for, they'll disappear when you forgive. When you see them as all the same and you don't judge them, then they'll disappear. That's the, that's the good news. Right when Herpy and I were being taken to the airport, we were, it was dark, it was at six o'clock in the morning in Lake Chapala area, and it was very, very dark, and we were being driven to the airport by Kenneth Clifford and uh, Nicholas. And I put on a playlist, and it was playing Kim Walker, I think I put on the Kim Walker playlist, it was playing some worship services and everything, all of a sudden, the voice of Jesus, the text of the Course came on and interrupted the, the music. <laughs> and Ken was driving and we all were like there, and then for probably the next 10 or 15 minutes, we all were just like listening. This is what came on before this trip. Shadows of the past. Just like the song we just heard in the lessons. To forgive is merely to remember only the loving thoughts that you gave in the past and those that were given you. All the rest must be forgotten. Forgiveness is a selective remembering based not on your selection, for the shadow figures you would make immortal are the, quote, enemies of reality. Be willing to forgive the Son of God for what He did not do. The shadow figures are the witnesses you bring with you to demonstrate He did what He did not. Because you bring them, you will hear them, and you keep them by your own selection, do not understand how they came into your mind and what their purpose is. They represent the evil that you think was done to you. You bring them with you only that you may return evil for evil, hoping that their witness will enable you to think guiltily of another and not harm yourself. They speak so clearly for the separation that no one not obsessed with keeping separation could hear them. They offer you the reasons why you should enter into unholy alliances to support the ego's goals and make your relationships the, the witness to its power. 
It is these shadow figures that would make the ego holy in your sight and teach you what you do to keep it safe is really love. The shadow figures always speak for vengeance and all relationships into which they enter are totally insane. Without exception these relationships has as their purpose the exclusion of the truth about the other and of yourself. This is why you see in both what is not there and make of both the slaves of vengeance and why whatever reminds you of your past grievances attracts you and seems to go by the name of love no matter how distorted the associations by which you arrive at the connection may be. It, we were just hushed in the car as this just went, went, went on and on. This was just the beginning <laughs> of the section. And it was basically saying, what we perceive as our brothers and sisters in the flesh are shadow figures made out of evil. And they basically represent all of our unconscious and hidden grievances. And, and who was reading it in the car? Yeah. Well, who, 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 well, the who did it? Well, we had it on my iPhone. Ah. And it, was, it was a recording. From you? From yourself? From, well, it was actually from A Course in Miracles uh, that was recorded on as an audio book. And it just slipped in in the middle of all this, <laughs> you know, Jesus, Jesus, and the shadow, <laughs> shadows of the past. <laughs> Jesus said, no, no, this is your preparation. <laughs> You've had enough hallelujah. Uh, now we have to get down to business here. It's time to heal. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then he goes on to say that bodies are central to all unholy relationships is evident. Your own experience has taught you this, but what you, what you may not realize are all the reasons that go to make the relationship unholy. For unholiness seeks to reinforce itself as holiness does by gathering to itself what it perceives like itself. Here's an interesting one. Then we got paragraph three. In the unholy relationship, it is not the body of the other with which union is attempted. Not the body of the other with which union is attempted, but the bodies of those who are not there. <laughs> the ego wants to be in relationship with all 7.8 billion bodies on the planet that are not there. You know it's death. Because the mosquito thing just snapped when he it's, said, it. Yeah, it snapped right there. So we see we have a group of bodies here, and then the other 7.8 billion the, the bodies that are not there. So the ego is invested in a relationship with the body, but the bodies who are not there, <laughs> it's, it's all the rest. From so, the personal oh. history, right? From each personal yeah. history. Yeah. It, it's more than 7.8 billion, it's trillions and trillions and trillions of bodies that are not there. For even the body of the other, already a severely limited perception of him, is not the central focus as it is, or in entirety. What can be used for fantasies of vengeance, and what can be most readily associated with those on whom vengeance is really sought, is centered on and separated off as being the only parts of value. Every step taken in the making, the maintaining, and the breaking off of the unholy relationship is a move toward further fragmentation and unreality. This is kind of creepy, the next part. The shadow figures enter more and more, and the one in whom they seem to be decreases in importance. So the ego is just trying to infiltrate with its evilness into the shadow figures, and the ones, one in whom they seem to be decreases in importance. It just is trying to uh, make such a picture of darkness that the mind just becomes so dark that it just gives in to the ego, it gives in to death, it succumbs to death. Time is an indeed unkind to the unholy relationship, for time is cruel in the ego's hands as it is kind when used for gentleness. The attraction of the unholy relationship 
begins to fade and be questioned almost at once. Once it is formed, doubt must enter in because its purpose is impossible. The ideal, in quotes, of the unholy relationship thus becomes one in which the reality of the other does not enter at all to spoil the dream. And the less the other really brings to the relationship, the better it becomes. Thus, the attempt at union, which is what relationship with bodies is supposed to be centered on, thus the attempt at union becomes a way of excluding even the one with whom the union was sought. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me think of that part in the Course, minds are joined, bodies do not. That's, Jesus is being very blunt, and now he's saying, it becomes a way of excluding even the one with whom the union was sought. Think about Valentine's Day. <laughs> I, you send your little heart, you are special to me, I love you, and Nico's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Excluding even the one with whom the union was sought. For it was formed to get him out of it and join with fantasies in uninterrupted, quote, bliss. So it's all a giant scheme to focus the mind on the bodies and keep the mind away from the light. It's really quite an intricate scheme to keep the body from knowing spirit, to, from knowing union, true union, the one mind, the light. You know, it's like a hugely intricate scheme. That's what the movie will be about tonight. <laughs> How can the Holy Spirit bring His interpretation of the body as a means of communication into relationships whose only purpose is separation from reality? What forgiveness is enables Him to do so. If all but loving thoughts had been forgotten, what remains is eternal. So there's the selected power of remembering. That the Holy Spirit forgets every thought of the past that has to do with bodies, and only remembers the loving thoughts. Almost like a filter that just remembers the love. Only the love. Only the loving thoughts are true. And that's what the Holy Spirit is in our mind. Thank goodness. is It's a selective rep remembering mechanism for only remembering the love. That's why when I watch some of these movies, God's Not Dead, I always hear this black guy in there saying, God is good, always. And always God is good. That, that God is just pure goodness. And Jesus even says in the, in the Course, in the text, the ego can see, see some goodness, but not all goodness. You see, it selectively names certain things as good, and certain things as bad. And then there's this heaven and hell thing, and who makes it to heaven and who doesn't, and all kinds of schemes that are, go under the name of religion, but really it's just guilt. Mm. You know, what a wicked kind of a theology where some make it back to God and some burn in hell. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of a wicked perception, but that's what many of us were raised with. You know, there's a heaven, there's a hell. You better be good, you better be nice, you better do things right or you'll burn in hell. That some of us were raised with some version of that. And then he says, this continuity extends to present by increasing its reality and value in your perception of it. In these loving thoughts is the spark of beauty hidden in the ugliness of the unholy relationship where hatred is remembered. So really, that's the purpose of relationship, find the spark of beauty. The purpose of community, find the spark of beauty. The purpose of <laughs> anything you can imagine in this world is only watching movies, find the spark of beauty. It's, it's like that's our goal. It, it's like there's one in us who remembers only the loving thoughts. Only the good, only the pure good, and that's the goal, is to focus our mind like a laser beam on that. Find only good, only good. So the movie tonight, has some funny moments in it, but I have showed this movie. I remember one time I was showing this movie in Kentucky and it turned into like a revival because it was so deep. 
you were like, this is deeper than the Matrix. Damn it. They were like, God, what is this? And people in Kentucky were like, what are you doing in our living room? Well, I was giving them a commentary, feeding them, and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> but it is, yeah, I thought that's a good lead in to our, we start the retreat in a, what, a couple of days? Yeah. Friday, so Friday this is probably a good, uh, yeah. it kind of gets things going <laughs> 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 for all the participants who arrive. Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> and then yeah. maybe yeah, we'll see what movie comes in during the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah, this movie is called The Island. This is an edited version because we do have to get to sleep tonight, and if we did the whole movie, I know you would like the special effects and everything, but we probably would get to bed at 2.30. This one is trimmed down uh, from two hours and something to an hour and 38 minutes, so we can digest it and just get the core of, of what it's teaching us without all the extra features and everything that's going on. Ewan McGregor, Scarlett Johansson, it involves memory, it involves um, it involves a, a constructed world that is entirely constructed from a lie and from lies that the people within that world seem to function in, doing jobs, doing tasks. Uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations in this world. Um, in this world, unlike the projected world we see, they <laughs> they have uniforms. It's kind of sweet. They all wear white. <laughs> I've been in some communities that only wore white. <laughs> That's a nice trick, but uh, you know, <laughs> dress up the shadow figures. <laughs> Everybody wears white. <laughs> Everybody's holy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> but in here, they all wear white. They, their education is limited. They are purposefully only given a very limited, limited education because of the fear that more education or could lead to more questions. They're told not to question things. Uh, they're just to do their job and not question anything, and they're told that they've been evacuated from a contaminated world and they are in a safe space now, and that every so often they should just keep working hard and working hard in their monotonous jobs and tasks, and eventually there's a lottery, and if they win the lottery they get to go to the island and live a beautiful life on an island, which which, in one sense, that's kind of a version of what this world is, you know. If you work hard for years and years, and you save the money, then you can spend the money on your, your golden nest egg, on something in the future that will be happy, that will make up for all the suffering, and all the hard work and boredom, <laughs> and monotony and everything that leads to it. So it's, it's, Beautiful movie because it does have these metaphors. Like it's a very much of a future emphasis. You want there's a programming they all go through. You want to go to the island. Everybody's supposed to want to go to the island, and and there's a lottery, and you might win the lottery, and if you're chosen, you get to go leave the place and go to this sanctuary of paradise that is not contaminated. But this is the so-called safe haven that allows people to live their lives in safety, uh, protected from the contamination. It's a little bit like, the, you know, they talk about the fall from grace and, and uh, Lucifer being a, a fallen uh, angel, and, and that this world being uh, a fall from grace, at least in Genesis, in the Bible, that's what they paint, that this world. There was paradise, then there was a contamination, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know, taking a bite out of the fruit, that you, forbidden fruit. And you know, even in the Bible, and many cultures have their own separation story, but basically it's like saying something is 
majorly contaminated, majorly wrong, and now you've got to get back from the contamination. In this movie they portray it as a future event, and most religions do. You know, I just was in Utah, they, they have a, I was in a temple, it was a massive temple, and in, in the temple I went into all these different chambers, this was the Mormons, the, the Latter-day mm -hmm. Saints, and there was one place where it was like a, it was like a union area where couples could go to Maybe. get married right. in a special room, and then you were married forever, and that was a good thing too, because if you died it didn't matter, you would be together as a couple in heaven, if you were married in this room. It was a very special room and everything, and then, so we, I was like listening very carefully how, you know, this, it was bringing in forever. Like, you get married here in a special room, and then you live forever. No questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy that was talking about it, he had tears coming down, because uh, he was like, I'm married, and oh, and my wife and I are going to live forever. Our marriage will bless forever and, in heaven. And, you know, he was very touched, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really gave yourself <laughs> over to the forever, forever part of it, then of course you would have tears of joy. How could you experience it anything other than that? But, but basically that's what the beginning of this movie is. Then we start to pull back the screen a little bit and we start to pull, as they do in Wizard of Oz, pull back the curtain and start to see what is underneath this monotonous, rule-regulated world. Uh, and that's what we're doing with The Course in Miracles. We're pulling back the curtain in our mind of what we believed in and what, what we're thinking. That's these past thoughts that are projecting this past world. And all we have to do, Jesus is saying, is just see that it's over and done. He says, you're but reliving an instant that's already over and gone. You're just trying to bring back into the present something that's already been healed. It's a done deal, it's been, the, the, the problem's been solved, but you keep bringing it with you into the present and thus denying the glory of the holy instant. You keep just trying to relive something that's overdone. We but undertake a journey that is, is already over. Looking back on it as if we're still making it. So, so it's the identification with these past thoughts and this projected world that is the problem. It has nothing to do with like uh, evil people or tyrants or agents of destruction, you know, that the world <laughs> <laughs> the world says <laughs> agents it's of okay, destruction. <laughs> <laughs> It has nothing to do with any of that, you know. People always say, what about terrorists? Yeah, what about terrorists? You know, in the end, you know, we have to take all of our characters, our Mussolini's, our Osama Bin Laden's, our, our Hitler's, our Gandhi's, our Mother Teresa's, our Jesus figures, all of our saints and all of our terrorist sinners, and we have to start to wait, wait a minute, my mind is making up a dualistic system here, and trying to praise the, the saints and criticize the sinners. And Jesus is like, that's not going to get you home. You know, you can go on and on. You might have a strong case of Mother Teresa-itis, but it still ain't going to get you home because you have to forgive her. He says in the Course a couple times, forgive me your illusions. He's, he's saying, I'm the Christ, you're the Christ, we're the Christ, and, and the Christ is a man, isn't a man or a woman. It does, the Christ isn't in history, and the Christ isn't uh, masculine or feminine. You know, it has nothing to do with these concepts that you've projected. The Christ is just light, pure light, and it has nothing to do with any of the images. So. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> That's a setup. <laughs> I need to. Where's 
to have dress rehearsal for that retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Would you see Eva almost a little bit closer? Yeah. Eva, could you move Missing the left shoe. Starkweather 
to Delta. Your time has come. You're moving out to the island. I start with a two Delta here. And as you know, the biggest dream of my life just came true. I mean, I've only been with you guys for like six months, but I won the lottery. <laughs> That's right, it's made start, brother, okay? To go out and breathe fresh air, swim in the ocean. I can't believe I won. You call me Mr. Popular. I know. <laughs> it's me. It's me. You guys know I'm not like two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to the island. We're going to have so much fun. And I need to see you guys out there. You can do it. I won. I got a disturbance on elevator 12. Plaza level. Just moments before his final departure to the island. Nature's last remaining pathogen free zone. Lucky guy, huh? Don't you catch me? The next lottery is tonight. The next lottery is tonight. <laughs> How long have you been here? Two years. Hmm. What about you? Three. Three. I've been here seven. If I do the math, that makes me the biggest lottery loser in the room. Such a loser. Flag for public disturbance before. I, I had a very small emotional outburst, sir. Safe to say it's over? Yes, very safe. I'm feeling much better. Well, then have a pleasant day. Maybe you too. You both have a pleasant day too. Okay, let's pause it there. <laughs> so you can see it's a world of repetition, control, uniformity with the dress. Uh, all these different rules, and, and here there's even very much emotional control. I mean, to some extent that the world, the projected world is like that. Jenny and Barrett were saying that they had a friend here a few years ago, and he was screaming and ranting profanities, and then the neighbors, you know, that was like the, yeah. the consequence. The, the neighbors were like, what is going on? But here, he just bangs on the screen there when the island is showing. He has an emotional outburst because he feels like he's been there all those years. He's lost again. And now there's the emotional police as soon <laughs> as he's had a, an outburst. <laughs> but we don't quite have that in this world, the emotional police. I mean, some of us did in school though. You know, we, we went to pretty... My mother was a teacher. I, I had like all these sets of eyes as my mother worked at the school and I was like, you know, because if I did anything or said anything, it would make it back <laughs> to my mother. And she would say, oh, I talked to Mrs. So-and-so. <laughs> she saw you in the hallway as such and such and you, were, you said this and you screamed this, you know. It was like, it was pressure. But this is what this is. So their, their education is very limited, but their emotions they have all the same emotions because they're still perceiving a world of differences. It's very frustrating to perceive a world of differences because there's all kinds of fear and guilt and shame and pain that's underneath those differences and the only way to release the perception of differences and hierarchies and all the things that, that are so hated in this world is you have to release all attack thoughts or empty the mind of everything it thinks and thinks and thinks it knows. Lesson number 23 from the Course. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. So that's, and he says, this is the only way that will work. Jesus Christ says in that lesson, this is the only way that will work. No other way will work. Most people don't put that in books because people shut the books. <laughs> the author thinks he knows everything. 
actually this author does <laughs> actually know everything. So when he says this is the only way that will work and no other way will work. So you can see it's, there's a lot of similarities to, to the projected world. That's what's so, so good about this. But, but the main thing in here is nobody knows how this world came about. And, in, and it's pretty much the same in terms of our world. You know, when you ask people, what, how did the world come about? The, the Buddhists might have an answer, the, you know, every, the Christians say, read Genesis. God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And uh, we had that come up during our retreat, <laughs> over and over. <laughs> he, Javi was like, God created the world in six days. Time does not exist. God <laughs> created the world in six days. Time does not exist. You know, to try to juxtapose, it's not true, it's not true. But, but just like in this, our world seemingly, in this world, there's no awareness of how all this started. There's no uh, evidence of any kind of source. It's just accepted as just the way things are. Which is the same with this world. That's just the way it is. You have to just take the good with the bad and you know. But it's interesting, this only in the present moment it happens. I mean, it's not in the past. Yeah. So. Yeah. The Big Bang is yeah. it's not really even a, that's the scientific yeah. view of this world is the Big Bang. Yeah. But what's, then people say, well, what's, where did the Big Bang come from? Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big mystery then. Mm -hmm. Where did it, because one, uh, yeah, one is there seven years, another three years, so they must have come, know where they come from, and what, did they have a normal life? Is that known? Or? Well, they, they are named, like, for the year that they're born in, like, like in school, you can sometimes, they have grades, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, Lincoln, our main character there started the movie, Lincoln Echo Six. It's like he's, that's a name that basically is, is saying which um, group of people that came into existence at the same time, like third graders all mm -hmm. come into this, like three years or however many years they are for third grade, six, seven years or whatever. So there is an awareness that their name, they're given the name, it's very kind of, sounds very scientific, it's not like John or Paula, it's, it's a name that's very descriptive of when they seem to come into existence in this world. So, mm. for humans it's, I was born to these parents, in this country, in this year. And, and with them, they've got their own system inside here. But none of them, are encouraged to question anything about that, how that happened. Um, they don't really seem to have parents, so you'd think they'd, they'd be questioning, but, but in this world everybody just assumes it's the parents, that the pro-creativity, sexuality over the generations that, that produce the generations. But in here they seem to exist, but they, they don't, they aren't educated, they, they don't have as much education as the ones in this world. They're, it, they're kept at a very, very low level of education because they don't want them questioning too much. That could disturb things. So it's, it's again, it's propaganda and control. It's maybe a little more different version than this world, but you can see the similarities are spectacular, which is what makes this movie such a good teaching device, because for everyone, we have to go beyond the lie. What lie made this up? Jesus says, I have invented the world I see in the workbook, so he's saying it's an invention. But what is underneath the invention is the most important thing. Okay. I was just thinking of the, like the, the teens, you know, the, the rituals. In the, how, how safe the ego is in rituals, you know, even in community or families or anywhere. How that alluring that is. 
would be unique rituals like when you read that shadows of the past i was thinking of that because like, instead of being safe in rituals like to go into the present moment otherwise the projections and the shadow figures will just keep showing up yeah. they're like rituals of time so when the mind believed that it could separate from god the experience went from bliss and peace and love to and oneness to chaos. And then the ego invented judgment at that point to manage the chaos, just like, you know, there's rules in classrooms, like for preschoolers, instead of food fights and pulling hair and all the things that children tend to do, uh, they have rules. And that's why there's, even in preschool, there's quite a lot of rules to keep the order. And that's why the ego invented the judgment, was to bring order into chaos. Because if there was too intense of a chaos, then the mind would just give up the belief completely. It would give the ego up. But it wanted to protect itself, so it invented judgment as a way to minimize the chaos without letting it go. So even judgment, is, you can see there's a reason how it came into being and why it seems to be so important. Because he says, you believe that with, without, uh, without judgment, um, all would be chaos, which is what the ego does to me. It's very limited education, there's proximity warnings if anyone gets too close, and so they're trying to Eliminate sexuality, eliminate conflict, tell everybody to be polite and nice and peaceful and healthy. So it's much, there's a, like a lot of focus on the health of the body too. And, and all these kind of ideals, but they're trying to use behavioral controls, like pro proximity warnings if they get too close. You know, it, it's, it's a world of pretty strong control. Uh, considering all the rules and the regulations and everything, but anytime there's control of any kind, it must be that there's the ego is underneath trying to maintain itself, maintain its own fear-based belief system. It's not really about the form, it's just the ego trying to control the world. And then Jesus says, you have no control over the world you make, <coughs> and he's teaching us like five, six, seven, eight, you know, that that basically you can't change the world and you have absolutely no control over the world you made. So, all attempts to change the body, to change other bodies, to get them to behave in certain ways, like the children, you know, you know the control that goes on with parents and children, behave, no dessert for you, <laughs> or at school, detention, you'll get a detention if you step out of line. It's basically a world of control that the ego is set up, and the way out of it is to try not to control any aspect of it, to, to let all things be exactly as they are, accept everything exactly as it is, without any inclination to change anything in form. So it's the exact opposite of what, what we learn. Exact opposite of all the conditioning, <laughs> of all the programming. Hmm. Yeah. That many times when I'm with Herpy, you know, she'll, if she notices something, or she gets upset with something, pray. It's like, pray, 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 pray. It, 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 that has to be like the first option, because the prayer is not to change the world, it's to yeah, release the, the thoughts, yeah. release the thoughts, release the judgments in the mind, which is what Jesus is saying. Yeah, you must change your mind, you must release these grievances and judgments, but don't think that something's going wrong in the world. Nothing's ever going wrong. It's always flowing. It's all, a script is written. It's just as exactly as it was set up, and, but there's no attempt to change it. Not to improve it, not to try to make it better, worse, you know, to really let all things be. And in spiritual community, what an opportunity <laughs> to let all things be exactly as they are. You know, it's, if you were just living as a hermit, <laughs> in, the, in the woods, <laughs> like Henry David Thoreau, or you know, like Buddha went off, you know, to, to live in the woods. It's, it's intense to try to do it as a hermit, but when you try to do it in relationship or 
with groups, it's almost like the ego's like, the more the merrier, more shadow figures we can get here. The ego's like saying, oh, I'm going to have fun with this, because it, it's, there's so much investment in thinking that people think their own thoughts, have minds of their own, have wills of their own, and that, that you've got to combat what those other wills are. And then the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, you have to get into guidance, you, you have to come, you were talking about the flow of guidance, mm -hmm. you have to come into that flow of guidance, pray, listen and follow, for peace of mind, there's no other way. So there's where the bodies come from. <laughs> <laughs> they're grown, kind of like in the matrix, yeah. you know, they're grown and they're used, the matrix as batteries supply to run the artificial world of the matrix, using the energy of the humans. The, these are, this is how they come before they're tagged on their wrist and they're named in terms of their generation and given their name like Licko, Lincoln Six Echo, the main character. And so you can see this is the part that the characters are unaware of. You know, in this world we have, we have stories that tell us where we were born, where we came from, we think they're real stories too. It's like these are, this 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 is a story that's kind of kept from the the participants in the world, so they don't know pretty much. They they're told they're saved, rescued from the contamination, but that's not actually what's happening. But it's a good parallel in the sense that that even the stories that tell the story of the birth of the body, the location, the the parents, or the test tube, or however it, it seems to come about, and everything is part of a construct that's made up by the ego to give a, a semblance of starting point. But nothing really has a starting point or an ending point, because it's all projection from the ego. There are no real stories, even as uh, you just hobby would kept saying the story of Jesus is a story that can be helpful as, as an inspirational story of letting go of the world, but then in the end you have to let go of that story as well, he, he would say, and see the, the Christ as it is, as a, as a spirit, as a perfectly divine spirit, not a man. It's not achieved through manhood or through activities in the body, it's just the presence of light that's behind the veil. But in the end, that's part of the, the the awakening is letting go of of all the stories, the good stories, the bad stories, thinking there's a reality to any story because the story would, to be real would have to have a causation point in, in linear time, and there's no causes causes or effects. Or we heard in the shadow lens stories, you know, where nothing's born and, and nothing dies. For nothing is, there's only lies in Shadowland, that's what the angels were, were saying. Nothing is, there's only lies in Shadowland. So it's literally giving a sense of the, the full extent of the perceptual world is just unreal shadows. Mm. Part of a, a vast construct, including a, other galaxies and cosmos and things that science is still looking for with large telescopes. Oh, Hubble telescopes and everything, but it's all looking in the direction of, of space-time. And Jesus is saying, no, the kingdom of heaven is within. That's where the meditation, the prayer come in, to go inside and see the, that it's all a lie. But he's like saying, you can't really get upset at a lie when you just see it, its entirety. If you see the entirety of the falsity of it, then you can just look upon it with calm, tranquil mind, which is the Holy Spirit's perspective. But if you try to go inside of it and give meaning to the stories, give causation to the stories, try to figure it out, or analyze it in any kind of way, then that's, that's the ego, just going in and trying to make it real. With everything, with, with the body, with the personality, with relationships, with community, even 
you know, in the end, community is a is a symbol that can be used to have the mind go into stillness and come into communion with the Creator. It's not like a, a lasting symbol, it's another one of those temporary symbols that's just used to clear the mind and to, to come into communion with God. I and the Father are one. I am one with the Creator. I am the Christ and, and God is my Creator. I am as God created me. So, this movie is fantastic because here's just Lincoln Six Echo, he's just curious. And when Dr. Merrick says, what's bothering you? I don't know. Why do I wear white? And, you know, there has to be more. You know, how many times have we heard all of us and a lot of others say there has to be more than this repetitive, methodical, rule, structured perception. There has to be more than this. There must be another way. There must be another way. There has to be another way. Yeah. Like Helen and Bill. And then this movie is, it's always great when you see it acted out, but this whole constructed world that they seem to be inhabiting and question, beginning to question, Linko, Lincoln Six Echo, he's, he's the questioner who's like saying, what, why, why always white? And where do the tubes go? <laughs> his buddy's like, go right there, go right there, you know? He's, he's just interested with the six feet in front of him and all day long just putting uh, nutrients. Uh, it's, for, it's for the food, you know? We need food, right? It's, I, mean, I like that, you know, he's, he's already concluded what the purpose is of the tubes and everything and he doesn't need to know anymore. But for spirituality, it's always questioning much, much deeper, like, what is underneath the tubes? <laughs> and, and it's beyond where the tubes begin and where they end, but, but tubes, you know, what's the purpose of tubes? And really they only have one purpose, it's the same purpose with the rest of the images, forgiveness, to see their falsity equally, they're equally false, that's the no order of difficulty in miracles, no hierarchy of illusions. So, it's a fantastic movie. He's, he's, I mean, he's got a buddy who, he, he uses his little tri-key to, to pretend like his computer's broken, he goes and asks questions, the guy has some porn, why aren't, are these your friends? Sometimes. Uh, why aren't they wearing any clothes? You know, remember, they're trained to block out sexuality and now he's over in Sector 5 and he's a bit questioning like a child would. What, what's, are these your friends? Some of the time, why aren't they wearing any clothes? You know, it's, it's like a child asking questions of their parent. And yet, he he's, uh, has a sparkle in his eye because he, he knows there has to be more. He doesn't know what the more is. Now this technician, he's gone up and he's seen them birthing one of the, you know, these, these characters, these creatures that will be trained to be functioning as part of the system, but they're not babies, they're, they're actually a grown adults. Agnates, I think they, they call them, but they're like clones. They're like clones, just growing clones, and then quickly cutting them open and then uh, getting them functioning. He says, oh, it works, great, you know. <laughs> if they get a clone out and the water it's like the, the womb, cutting the, 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 the plastic, the cord, and, and getting them started. So, he's seeing that, and then uh, he's, he's like, you want, hey, don't do it now, I'm just the technician, I'm going to blow chunks if I see this, you know. It, it's like, he's like, that's above my pay grade, you know, I don't know. He seems to know that, that this is all some kind of a setup, and he's working in Sector 5, doing his part as a maintenance technician, as part of the matrix, this whole matrix thing, but he, he doesn't, he knows more, he says before the contamination, you know, that's where he got the stash of, of drink that he drinks, and, but, so he's kind of implying there's something that before the contamination, he's still playing along with the story of, of the contamination. And most religions play along with the story of the separation, most religions and philosophies, and even when the guy asked me this weekend, uh, what's his name, the 
the man was Is asking about Karma? reincarnation. Fermin. Fermin. Fermin, yes. Oh. The doctor who was asking about reincarnation because he was very much into Buddhism. And reincarnation kind of, you know, it describes the problem. It doesn't really answer anything, but it, reincarnation is a different description of the separation and the reparation over time with lifetimes and, and everything like this. Maybe a little more believable than the heaven and hell story, a little more of a closer step. But still, it's just describing the problem. It's not offering the answer or the solution. But then we did ask more about karma. And then I started talking about John Lennon and his song <laughs> Instant Karma and getting more into the holy instant, which is what Jesus is teaching, you know, is, is really what it's about. It's, it's available in an instant. It's not something that needs time. It's the immediacy of salvation. So. Same giant hand from the Holy Spirit. I get one to the high five, but there is a way out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was just watching for me face because when I mentioned John Lennon and, and Beatles and Instant Karma, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit do just the words oh, okay. to use for Femin, the doctor. The Beatles, John Lennon, Instant Karma. <laughs> you know, it's like all those years of Buddhism. <laughs> Here we go, go deeper. <laughs> See, in the movie, the, the, the island is what they use to keep people believing in the system, to keep people doing the monotonous jobs, following all the rules, everything like this. In this world, it's the future of the body that is the, the carrot. Okay, without the future of the body, who would follow insane rules? Who would do stressful jobs? Who would stay with boring jobs, who would stay with personal responsibilities even, who would stay with anything of the entire system if it wasn't for the, the belief need in the future of the body, survival of the body, survival of the fittest as they call it and so forth. But then when you get into the course, like lesson 135, he's just saying the body is in need of no health-inducing uh, tools, medicines, resources. It's, you know, it's, he's just saying, you, you don't really need a body because you weren't created as a body. You're a creation of love, of light, you're a spirit. And, but the, to the extent that you put something in the future as a goal, then you don't want to know what is now. So then you get caught up into doing all these meaningless things. In fact, he even says at one point, at no single instant does the body exist at all. It's only remembered or anticipated. So you can see that the body itself is just a product of the belief in linear time. It, at no single instant does the body exist at all. It's always remembered or anticipated. And what humans call the present moment, which is squeezed between the past and the future, is not really the present moment. The present moment is before time was. It's, it's before Abraham was, I am. It's the Christ. So, it's like a mesmerism that's just based on linear time. But for most people, they would say, well, I, do a, I don't like my job, I don't like my life, but I, I try to compare and say, I've got better off than others, use the comparison device, and in the future I will find happiness. Mm. Uh, and it's the future happiness of the body uh, that, that is seen as the big carrot. You know, I have to go through all this other stuff, and I mean a lot of other stuff, just for the future body to find happiness. But it's a future goal, it's not a present goal at all. So once you start to, to say, wait a minute, I have, Jesus is giving me a present goal, then you're on the journey of guidance. Then you're on the journey of being guided to let go of everything that you believe, of emptying your mind of everything you think you think, of letting go of, of outcomes. Uh, like even with the, the tree sparking, you know, and wait a minute, we got a retreat coming up, <laughs> we have no power, you know. It, you know but it's that future retreat, 
and all those future bodies coming and all, you know, it, the pressure and the intensity just starts to come in, organized on the belief in linear time. We are powerless. And we are powerless, literally. Yeah. That's a good one. We are powerless to, to prepare. Even though Jesus would say, pray. Like that movie we showed during the, the weekend, you know, where the, the girl, even when one of the cheerleaders goes down and the oh, yeah. the Kennedy is, is yeah. blind, pretty much blind, she says, pray, you, pray. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was just, the guidance and instructions were uninhibited, they were still there, but it had nothing to do with what she could perceive with the five senses. That was just a totally a, a given, you, pray, now, you know. So it's it's beautiful to see this because it's this movie is so good at kind of emphasizing things, and then now we're starting to see that things are not what they seem, and that's what we've we've felt about this world. Something's fishy. Mm -hmm. Things are not what they seem. We don't know exactly. We can't put a finger on it, but we know something is fishy about about this world, and we don't we want to be shown what what is that? It's it's not right. And it's all time. <laughs> it's the, like the fish. There's no water in the ocean. Fish is less. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's kind of like the Course in Miracles for the human being. You know? <laughs> time and space are an illusion. <laughs> but maybe I had a little assumption about time and space. I'm not saying a big one, but just a little. That it was real. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's good. We have a product on the loose, <laughs> and these clones all believe they have a life of their own, a mind of their own, decisions of their own, and choices. And and here it's kind of like in the Truman Show. There was Kristoff, you know, in the Truman Show. Yeah. You know, I, I brought him into this world and I can take him out. Mm -hmm. This Merrick is like playing this ego figure that's generated. The whole thing is for economics, whereas uh, in the Truman Show it's all product placement and everything on the show is for sale to drive the artificial world economically to keep it going for the ego's purposes, Christoph's own glory, his own purposes, it's, a, it's a basically everything's for sale. And here, they, they grow human beings as to be adult, and then they break them out of their little uh, cocoon or larva or their, their sack, and then they, they train them with little education and everything so that they can be functioning so they can use their body parts. Just like in this world, you know, you can donate, after you die, you can donate your heart or your liver and everything. This is, we saw the, the little, the mother that gave birth, there was a, a, someone that looked just like her, with her husband having trouble having a baby, and that's why they take the babies from the, the pregnant women when they when they're born for their their parts the whole body was dark weather the, the the athlete the big athlete they're just going in for his heart to take his heart mm -hmm. for to use his heart how does that relate to this world that seems to be like extremely beyond what this world is but you got to remember the ego is is the Christoph, the ego is the Dr. Merrick, the ego is the belief in the mind that made up all the bodies and all the, the planets and all the everything else, the houses, the societies, the whole, all time and space, the ego made them all up to, for its own purposes, to exist, to distract the mind which originally is a divine mind, but when it falls asleep, it's split into that which knows and that which doesn't know, the Holy Spirit and the ego. And then the world is used, so the ego is using all the bodies 
and the body parts. It, it actually will say in special relationships, body parts, certain body parts are emphasized. The part we just read about shadows of the past, the ego makes its own fantasy world and, and based on its preferences, it wants to pick certain bodies and certain body parts for its pleasure and, and then judge against other bodies. It may like young bodies more than old bodies. It may like beautiful bodies in its own definition of what beauty is than ugly bodies. It has made up a whole pictorial representation of a world of unreality, of shadows from the past. And then it's just using, just like Merrick is using all these characters for body parts, it's using all the bodies and all the parts and all the fantasies. Shadow land is really fantasy land. It has nothing to do with eternal reality, nothing to do with eternal love and oneness. It's just a projection of, of fantasies. But it's how the ego tries to use the fantasies to distract the mind from, from being still and waking up to God. That's the key thing. And that's why, ultimately, why it goes much more. Mysticism takes everything into prayer and meditation. Because you do keep asking the question, what is it for, underneath? And that's why the mystics and saints, they start off in cities and then they probably leave their vocations and become simpler and simpler and simpler. Buddha left the palace. He had to get out of there. He was supposed to be the next king. And Siddhartha had, is like, this is not right. I don't want to be the next king. I don't want to be whatever comes with it. I don't want it. Royalty and everything. So Siddhartha takes off when the whole place, the whole palace falls asleep. He goes off with his trusty friend and his horse to, to leave the palace because he knows there has to be more than this palace. All these riches and servants and fine food and he's just aware, Siddhartha is aware. He doesn't know what it is so he goes to find the Buddhahood, to the, which we would call like the Christ Presence, the Buddha Presence. And, and that's why in mysticism it's like prayer becomes more important and then more important and then more important and then more important because prayer is the medium of miracles and miracles sh keep showing glimpses that the false is false. The false is false. What is a miracle? A miracle does not create or really change at all. It merely looks on devastation, shadow land, and reminds the mind of what it sees as false. It's just seeing the false as false. It's not even a shift in perception. It's just plainly seeing the false as false, seeing the temporary as temporary as opposed to eternal, which is real. Nothing real, eternal, can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. So, so it's a big shift in the mind. And here, you can see the look on, on uh, Echo, what's it, Echo 6? I think it's 6 Echo. You can see the look on his face. As soon as he comes up through that loose tile and he sees what he sees, He's like, oh, the island is not what they've been telling us. And he's been getting dreams mm -hmm. and seeing the programming and knowing, oh my gosh, everything that I've believed and everything that's stirred up in my memory, that's what's upsetting me, is I'm getting all these prophetic dreams and seeing things way beyond the tubes, beyond the little short timeline of, of a human being, or in this case, you know, even an agnate, they call him, a clone, he's like, Oh my gosh. So, now it's perfect because Scarlett Johansson, you know, her character, you know, he, he, that's his friend and she's just been, she just won the lottery to go to the island. He had said, what are you, sick or something? I just saw you in Merrick's office, like, almost like she was the next one. She said, I'm not sick. And then when she wins, she's, everybody's, she's so thrilled. She thinks she's going to paradise. So the ego's trying to convince the mind that the body and the future of the body is the goal. And it's worth striving for, working for, putting all your energy, all your education, all your training into survival of the body so that the body can have a happy future. Why, what else? You know, we, it, it's different cultures, they have different names for it. In the United States they call that the American dream. 
<laughs> it's, you know, it's not popular, right? If I, I, I'm not invited usually to go to high schools or anything and talk and say, well, the American dream is actually death. <laughs> not, that would not be popular. I would, that wouldn't be popular for the Republicans or the Democrats. There's a maniac loose and he's saying that the American dream is, is death. <laughs> we may differ in our opinions of what the American dream is, but this guy's saying it's death, meaning the future, future dreams and future ideals is, is death because it takes your mind away from the present moment, the, the, the now, which is the power of now, which is the escape from everything. So here, we'll watch now. There she is, Scarlett Johansson, just sleeping. She's, I'm going to the island. And she's all happy. She won the lottery and everything. And here comes her buddy, Lincoln Six Echo, down. The, the little fly, or the, the insect took him up. He just followed the symbol mm. of like a fly, because it was so rare. That's why some of us follow A Course in Miracles. It's a pretty rare book. Mm -hmm. Still, in this world, you know, it's like, what's that? <laughs> you know, it's like, but we follow the fly, we follow that little fly, and he's following, like, because it's he's never seen one. So he's just letting it go and following it, and then he uncovers this whole scheme that nobody in his world that he interacts with seems to know about. Mm -hmm. That's how we feel when we cover the Course, and we're like, <laughs> Try to tell your mother, mm -hmm. and my cat. I could, tell, I could tell my cat, my cat was interested. Not, not really uh, so much the biological family. You know, they were like, I already have a minister, get away from me. <laughs> so, so they come through the, the, the holographic thing, the holographic grid, and which is a beautiful symbol, like everything that they've been experiencing as real has been completely holographic with a power grid. And it's not only holographic, but it's underground. You know, it's not in the open. It's a, it's a hidden secret. The whole thing, the whole construct, the whole world that they've known, with the tubes and, and everything, and all the rules and everything, is, is just the hologram. And the hologram you know, if the part contains the whole. You know, it's it's a it's a trick. It it looks like many parts, but there's not really many parts there. It's just one thing. You had that insight in the meditation one time. The whole world's just one thought. Yeah. Just one thought. It's just a hologram. Now in this movie, symbolically, she's like, There's a door <laughs> they go through the door, then they pass through a hologram and now they race across and they come out that looks like uh in southwestern United States somewhere, and the whole thing with the power grid and the fans going is all underneath. What does that mean in terms of, of our mind training? They're, they've gone from the hologram of what seems to be the human condition to they're both products of that. So they're both images that are part, have been part of the hologram. And now when they go through that bridge, what does that mean? It's like Jesus has a workbook lesson, my thoughts are images I have made. So the image that you think you are as a person is just an image. But it's actually just a representation of a thought. A little private thought called a personality self. In the mind. It's just a symbol, an image of something. Like when you close your eyes and or you shut down the five senses, you could still think of your personality self, how it looks, all of its memories, all of its past memories, its future goals and ambitions. That's all thought. So symbolically, I see them now as they've actually come, off, you might say, off the screen, where these are two products among a group of products that think they're real, and a whole tech support team, including Merrick, that, that knows that they're just uh, clones, but are using them for money, for profit. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, the, the greed is basically underneath 
the way they're using the clones. They're using the clones for, for profit, for greed. And, and now when they cross through the grid, I'm seeing them symbolically as going now. Now they, they're going to have to, that's part one of the movie. So that is spectacular. But we haven't seen anything yet. Now <laughs> we're really, we've made it to first base. <laughs> baseball now. Now we're ready to go to second base, like with hypnotic. The movie because they're out now, they're out of the whole scheme that they believed was real. They're two products that seem to be out outside of their cage. <laughs> they got out of the cage. And I see that as going toward the mind because where else, if you got off the screen, if you started to disidentify with the character on the screen, you would be into mind training. You would start to find you would pay attention to what? Your thoughts. My thoughts are images I have made. Okay, what's the thought behind David? What's the thought that is David? It's an egoic thought, it's not the Christ, it's, but it's a thought in the mind. You see, it's not an actual physical presence, it's just a projection of a thought in the mind. The thought of any person, of any of the billions or trillions, those are all just ego thoughts, private thoughts with their own identity, their own personal identity. So now they've crossed over to the realm, I say they're going into the mind, and they, they don't know what the mind is, and nobody does. Mm. Uh, that's why we need mind training, because the ego made the world to keep us mindless, to think we have a body and a brain. And only psychologists and psychiatrists are in the realm of the mind, you know, mm. but not construction workers and, mm. you know, the teachers and all the, the other characters, you know. What do they know? Oh yeah, I heard about Freud and I heard about this mind stuff, but they're not so sure. But, so now they're starting to go and, and we will see that they will, they will now go on a quest in, in Act Two of Shakespeare's play to find their sponsors. Isn't that a great name, sponsor? Mm -hmm. If the person you think you are is just an image, then you have to get more in touch with sponsor. Which, since there's no causation in form, the bodies weren't made by other bodies through procreation, they're just projections, so then you have to go into the mind to get in touch with the sponsor, which is the thought that is sponsoring the clone sponsoring the image. Mm. See how helpful that is because how are you going to escape anything until you you start to get first in touch with the sponsor and then beyond that you have to find the creator, the real creator, God, and the real Christ, which is way beyond the sponsors too. But you see you have to get off the first seeing everything so personally, like everything's life or death it seems like in this world. Emotionally it feels a life or death struggle for the character, but the dream character is is not where we have to fix it. I know with Ken and Gloria, a lot of times Ken would say, the world's your classroom, and I always would hear Jesus saying, the mind is the classroom. Mm -hmm. The mind is the classroom, always. It's it, the world, we, in education we go through many classrooms, you know, with parents and and uh, elementary school and junior high, high school, university and everything. But the mind is actually the classroom because that's the level of causation. And no matter how you play it out in form, dreams are dreams are dreams. There's no difference between good dreams and bad dreams. There's, there's no, in the end there's no helpful and harmful dreams even, because one who dreams is not awake. And Jesus is saying, oh no, they're all dreams, even your nighttime dreams, they're all dreams. You, you say it's a sunny day, it's a beautiful day, you call it a beautiful dream, it's a rainy day, you call it a crazy, dark, dreary, humid dream. No, Jesus, no, there's no difference. Dreams are dreams are dreams, but waking is different from dreaming. And that's the only thing that counts. You know, it doesn't, what difference does it make if you rearrange some of the dreams? and call some of them better or worse. Oh, my life is so much better. I, got, I graduated, I got a good job, I earned a lot of money, I got my own house, I got this, I got this, I got this. It's funny even with our, with our friend uh, who will be, 
be joining is Javi, because uh, Javi's went from being thousands, tens of thousands of, I don't know how many, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, and then he started following his heart and everything, and then he's now he's making money, 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 and he's and rolling more in the money and everything, but then when we got here he said, I'm going to take you to my house. I live with my parents. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And he said, Here's where my girlfriend and I live, and it's in his mother's house. <laughs> the bottom of his mother's house. There's two little chairs there with the for the counseling and they took those to the thing and it's it's so cool, I thought. <laughs> my grandmother would love this. <laughs> a, a great story of going from poverty to well, and then you're still living in the basement of your mother's. I thought, this is fantastic. Because for him, he's really showing he's not into trying to get things and stuff, you know. He's just into the, the excitement of the awakening and the journey and the and recovery, you know. And I thought, that's beautiful. That's a, a great reminder. Yeah. So, here they go. Now you can see them. They, they made it out of what seemed to be what they thought was their life. But they still don't know who they are. They don't know what's happening. They just know they don't like where they seem to have been. That it was part of some kind of big lie. Like a whole system of lies and they're not interested. And look at them run. They're just trying to get out. But they don't know. Now this is like when people first get into spirituality, they're like, mind? What's a mind? Mm -hmm. You know? Nobody has a clue, really. <laughs> it's, it is really a discovery about the mind and the power of the mind. It's like a huge realm that's, that's completely unknown mm -hmm. when you're just into the physicality of things. So this, this is that point in spiritual awakening when you begin to move toward the idea that that what you appear to be in the world, in this case he seems to be a clone, is just a product that has been sponsored by something else, which I would say is a thought in the mind. And it's confronted because then you have to start to put all your attention on your thoughts. You know, is the, do I want these thoughts mm -hmm. about this personality that I think I am? You see how different that is from just thinking that you are that person and looking in time and space, looking around, what do I want, what will improve my person, my personality, what will shape me to become a, a better person, you know, all those kind of things. This is what the Course says is mind training is starting to See, my thoughts are images I've made. Everything is an image I've made. And everything is a pictorial representation of everything that I believe, without exception. Like the Lesson 152, the power of decision is my own. He said, everything you perceive is there by your own election, by your own decision. And it's there by decision because it's there by belief and thought. And that is in the mind. It says nothing to do about who my parents were or what happened to me when I was a child. All the things in human development are as if the past is causative and like Freud, you know, id and superego and childhood, the way you were treated as a child and all the craziness in human development. Oh, that's all Newtonian, that's out the window. It's now, it's you start to see, no, everything I perceive is holographically a, rep, a pictorial representation of everything I believe. So I, that's why I have to question everything I believe, because otherwise I'm just going to keep acting and reacting according to these mostly unconscious beliefs, like the programming and in the island. You want to go to the island, you're special. Mm. You know, you want to survive. Yeah, that's the programming. You want to survive as a body and a person, not, they don't teach us to, to get in touch with your thoughts, you know, the first thing, <laughs> what are you feeling? What do you think? What do you think? What might you believe? <laughs> might you believe in time and space? You know, we don't, we don't get the kind of spiritual psychotherapy from our teachers, they're <laughs> teaching us as if cause and effect are in the world and as if you, you need to Work hard, learn lots of things, get 
higher education, get a good job, get a good career, make lots of money, buy lots of things, and then grow old, get sick and die, like everybody else. And that's just all she wrote, you know. But then there's something in the mind, it's like there has to be more than that script of just seeming beginnings and endings. So here he goes, he's, he's the first one here we're, we're seeing in, in this mini-movie, we're collapsing it down quite a bit, but he's, he's coming uh, to meet his sponsor, and all he knows is, is this is the wealthy man who had him made, ordered him, <laughs> and used his genetics to have him made for body parts, so that he could, uh, his sponsor could live a longer life. And you can see that's still all a product of thought. It's still, even these thoughts that they're coming in contact with are still based on the future, you know, living longer. We talked about that earlier, the body existing longer instead of 70, 80, 90 years, 110, 120, 150, and spending money. These are all wealthy people. And they're in dream. Hmm. Yeah, a better dream. And using the power, it seems to come with money. Because there's people now in the world, in, you know, whatever this is, 2050 something, whatever, it, that have so much money that, that that's, this is their health insurance. They're not uh, applying to health insurance in the typical way, they're having agnates grown so they can get a new pair of lungs, a new pair of eyes, a, a baby that they weren't able to conceive, have that come in, you know, it's, it's money, the belief money can buy whatever you need. And this is the ego kind of using that belief to try to, to satisfy itself. But it's still about the prolong, prolongation of the body, you know, the body in years. That's the part that's the, the similarity with this world, it's the same motive. So this is science versus spirituality. Scientists believe that, that everything's in a linear way and his assistant's coming in, look, he's got 30 years worth of memory, look at it grow, and it is, and he's like, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. and it's consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's that there really is just one mind. It's consciousness, it contains everything of the dream world, because it's the split mind, but it's the part of the mind that that has invented everything of the cosmos, so it's all there already. And Merrick is a scientist, Dr. Merrick, and he's like, that's impossible. <laughs> this, we raised these agnates, you know, we gave them a little consciousness so we could keep the body parts going, but memories, and then now we're seeing what uh, Lincoln was experiencing, seeing renovatio, we'll find out what that means in Latin, <laughs> that's very important too on the whole show, and then motorcycles, and high-speed boats, and different things like that, that this is just showing that that consciousness is one as well. Mm. It's not part of the brain, the assistant's showing the brain and all the, the memories expanding, but from a scientific perspective, how is this happening with an agnate who's just three years old? <laughs> and he's got all these memories that are way beyond, the memories aren't coming from Newtonian external world experiences, mm. they're all in consciousness, they've already been pre-planned, pre-programmed, as part of the ego script, fake script. And the whole script is written, so it's all consciousness, but it's all less, less than number seven, the past. I see only the past. Mm -hmm. So it's like mind-blowing, this is why it's what does this pass the matrix? The people in Kentucky were like, what the hell are you showing us here? This, I was just getting used to the matrix. You are the one. Neo. The agents. <laughs> but this, this is deep because it's showing consciousness too. It's showing everything is, is in the realm of the mind. That's why the Course's training is mind training. It's nothing to do with the brain, nothing to do with neurology, nothing to do with with synapses in the brain, Joe Dispenza and all that. No, it's way, way, way beyond all, all that stuff. It's it's all consciousness. And then unified consciousness is forgiveness. That's the forget where you see it's all the same. 
fragmented consciousness is egoic, where you think it's all separate. Different people, different places. 7.8 billion people with 7.8 private minds, with private thoughts, you know, that's more the psychological model. All these people have to go through all these changes as persons. No, no, it's just one mind dreaming this whole thing, and consciousness is unified, and that's what the doctor is like, can't, he cannot fathom that, because his whole basis is, is to make money and to control the agnates, to control, to make a product, and then to sell it to clients and not tell them that they're, that we're actually having them live lives. He wants to have them think they're just little sacks of jelly, you know, you know, where they, they're buying a product, because they're not going to buy the product if it's like, you're, you're raising people and then you're killing them for me, you know. So it's all based on, on product, on what, what the ego can sell, what's believable to make money. And it's, it's a big money-making scheme, and, but the doctor is like, got to look like, uh, doesn't make any sense. His scientific mind is like saying, this is, how can this be? How can the memories be transferring to the, to the agnates? So the ego also has the emotions, because it's, I mean, it sure feels like we have personal emotions, but I mean, also the healing, you know, maybe dreams or nightmares. Or, yeah. Like I felt like, I slept one night in the cottage and I had this kind of dream and it felt like an old consciousness. It felt like here and now. When I woke up from it, it was this kind of strange, and it was like a strange in me experience. Like a sad or strange me experience. It wasn't like, oh, that's just the one consciousness. Strange, weird, disoriented, yeah. yeah. And it's that whole gamut of, we'll say, dark or painful or suffering or negative emotions, and then the other half of the gamut is the positive, pleasant, pleasureful emotions, which are all part of the ego as well. Then there's joy. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. The Holy Spirit's curriculum is this curriculum of joy. Joy, glee. What's your nickname? Vanessa Joy. Joy. <laughs> joy. Joy is ac an actual emotion, an, an, a real emotion. It's, it's, it's a derivative of love, peace, joy, love, true happiness, un constant happiness. Those are actual, actual emotions. He says you have two emotions, love and fear, but the joy, peace, happiness, love, they're all just derivatives of different aspects of, of the same real emotion. And he tells us, it's only through letting go of tack thoughts, the only way that will work, no other way will work, Lesson 23, and it's through miracles that you come into joy. You actually feel joyful, gleeful, for no earthly reason. Just a, like you've been talking about, just a bubbling kind of joy, like Jesus is taking me and taking me and saying, come closer, come closer. It's an actual emotion. But, but that is, is not really, it's, it's ex being experienced, glimmers of it in consciousness, because it's coming from the higher mind, from the right mind. But consciousness is the domain of the ego, so it's not really originating in consciousness. But it is getting experienced in consciousness, because consciousness always is experiencing either the higher mind or the lower mind. But the lower mind is tricky because it has all the pleasureful, pleasant emotions and the dark emotions. And, and for the human psychologists, they're trying to say, yeah, you need more pleasure. I remember um, when, when Lucy first uh, went up there and everything, she she told me on the phone one time, we did a video call, and they said, yeah, they, they sent me to like a, a doctor, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, and they said, we're prescribing for you reality therapy. <laughs> and, and she told me, and the reality therapy was, you have to see how much better off you have it than other people 
in the world. And then she told me in a video call, she said, I don't think that sounds like reality therapy the way that you and the Course are talking about reality therapy. Comparison is an ego device, you know, it's literally a therapist that was trying to tell her how good she had it compared to others who had it worse. And that's, that's how the ego always tries to solve it. You know, be grateful you got it better off than others, you know, that's not the gratitude of, of a loving creator who created you perfect, that's just the gratitude of false comparisons, you know. And she was saying, I don't think this is reality therapy at all. I said, no, it's not, it's <laughs> not, it doesn't even come close to spiritual awakening, yeah, so. But here we go, Merrick is now, he's just, he won't turn from suspicious to vicious. That's a suspicious look on Merrick's face. But, when he's threatened with his greed and his uh, his goals being threatened, then, you know, Jesus says the ego goes from suspicious to vicious. That's the thing of how can I, how are we going to tolerate this? But when he starts to realize it's it's way beyond what he thinks, then then the rage will come. The rage uh, will come. Can I ask one thing? Yeah. Uh, you said about, I didn't quite understand, that this one consciousness, like, this main character had had this memory, and you said it's all one consciousness. But there, I don't understand because he has the memories of his sponsor, I guess. So that's only a part. So uh, yeah, something that doesn't click. Yeah, it's it's. This is where we kind of go beyond the movie to the point where that consciousness is the domain of the ego. So. Consciousness is the, is the first split in the mind, when the mind forgets about spirit and pure oneness. So consciousness seems to have levels and you can train your mind to higher levels of consciousness. And yet when we talked about the, the, the clone meeting the sponsor, it's, it's starting, they, they still are reflecting the belief that they're different. You know, I'm Tom Lincoln, yeah, I, I'm Echo Six, Delta Echo Six, I, I'm, I'm a, your clone, I'm your insurance policy. What are you doing in my house? See, there's still not really, there's not the realization that the sponsor and the sponsee <laughs> are one. That would be a great realization in 12-step groups when, when you, <laughs> You're the sponsor and you've got a sponsee and then you, one moment you go, <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the sponsor or the sponsor, you know, it's, that's what the whole forgiveness is about, is that there's one consciousness. But it shows the spirit, you hate, you know, while you still believe you're human, you hate the ego, you hate the other, yeah. you hate your sponsor. As long as you believe there's something outside of you. Yeah. You hate your then the thought you it. is not really realized that, as a thought in the mind, because mm. it seems like there's a projection and a thought in the mind, a sponsor and an image. But the whole teaching of the Course is to start to realize that, that there's nothing outside the mind. That's what all the workbook lessons are aimed, you know, that the, there's no external world, it's just all, all consciousness. And then unified consciousness is where the peace comes, because then there's no there's no warring parts, like, there's no errant parts that have got out, you know. Don't like to change anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. like turn themselves into Hitler, turn themselves into Cleopatra, turn themselves into, <laughs> you know, Osama bin Laden. What about terrorism? Well, yeah. What about the ego? The ego is the terror. It's not the characters that it generates. You know, we have to let go of the ego and the mind. It can only be solved in the mind, because that's where, it's a belief. It's not a character that lived in Germany and slaughtered six million Jews. It's not a character that, that bombed this or did this or that in the world. That's, you see how clever the ego is. It projects out a world and then it projects the terrorist as the evil ones that are ruining the world. And then there's the saints that are the ones that are trying to save the world. And then Jesus is like, it's all projection. 
you're the one. <laughs> Remember the matrix, you are the one. You know, you gotta, that's the whole point is to see that there's nothing, there is no external. Remember we talked about lessons five, six, seven, eight. I'm, a, I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I see something that's not there. If you put five and six together, I'm upset because I'm seeing something that's not there. I'm, I'm seeing a hallucination that actually doesn't exist at all. Never has and never will. But it's upsetting to see a hallucination that does, doesn't exist. I see only the past, oh, and then my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I was talking about this with karma, the instant karma. It was answered the instant it arose. The instant the separation thought came, the Holy Spirit answer, answered it simultaneously, not successively. It would have been really great if he would have. <laughs> Jesus is like, oh it's even better than that! <laughs> better than that! It, I mean, it, it, that's why it has no effect. God is real. And it's done. This why it's, it's so irritating with spiritual teachings that says it takes time. This is so much better. <laughs> but but, it's, but it's still the identity though. You, yeah. It's not that the spiritual teachings are an external. There aren't any. Yeah. It's a hallucination of spiritual <laughs> teachings. Yeah, but I guess, yeah. Of dualistic spiritual teachings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes. You are my projection. You, you say something, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that's the real. And then there is this. We're here, you know. And it's yeah. It's going to be an interesting weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the couch, <laughs> going, "You're my projection." <laughs> and Bert goes, "You're my projection." <laughs> <laughs> Where's my sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my heavenly sponsor? <laughs> Where's where the Holy Spirit in this? I need my heavenly sponsor. My heavenly reminder. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Vanessa's like, oh, I just got here. Please. I didn't even unpack. Yeah. <laughs> so please. <laughs> Jumping into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. It's exciting. Now we're going to see what's, what's going to happen. We have the clone and the sponsor are wrestling. What is this showing us? That there's a huge resistance to ex just accepting that who you believe you are in this world is just a thought in the mind and nothing more. So you can see the sponsor, <laughs> the sponsor and the clone are are fighting it out here, because it's like the resistance to just starting, it's starting to accept that everything is thoughts. Jesus says it in the Course, he said, this is, the world is a world of ideas. We don't have some mental ideas and some physical, real, everything is an idea. And then, past that, it's more everything is equally, equally, an idea. No order of difficulty in miracles, <laughs> the first principle. So, but the first, but it's the resistance to, to seeing that there is no such thing as a physical and a mental. That's an artificial distinction. All illness is mental illness. Does anybody have any physical disabilities? No. It's mental illness. Believing in the ego is mental. Illness, but that means there is no physical illness. You see how the medical model splits it up into categories. There are physical ailments, mental ailments. Go to a psychologist and psychiatrist if you have mental illness. Go to a doctor, a physician if you have the physical. But that's still the resistance to everything is mind. Everything is consciousness. There's nothing but consciousness and until you can see that spirit is beyond consciousness too, but you have to see unified awareness, unified consciousness is what forgiveness is. It's the gateway back to the, the light, the eternal. So here it is, and we can see the sponsor and the sponsee, uh, you know, they, he found his sponsor, but look at his sponsor's face, uh, you know. 
<laughs> it's almost like he's like, I, I'm not giving it up, you know. Uh, I, he asked him, Rex, I, I don't know if you caught that, but he said, he said, how much, how much what was it? And it was five million. He wasn't talking about the car. He was talking about how much it took. Oh. All right. But it won't be long in the future when five million dollars will be a, a small investment mm -hmm. for a human life. Mm -hmm. When you consider all the mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. houses, cars, insurance, and everything. Five million, in this movie, maybe 2050 or whatever, he's, the sponsor has spent five million dollar investment. Not on the car, on the, <laughs> on the clone. <laughs> Probably the car's less, maybe. <laughs> but, so here we go, he's gritting his teeth there. You might remember in the Matrix, there's one point where Neo asked Morpheus, if somebody dies in the Matrix, do they die in the mind? And Morpheus says, the mind cannot live without the body. That is actually metaphysically incorrect in the in the matrix, because the mind is the is the origin, is the cause cause of so the body. Yeah, the mind. When he says the mind cannot live without the body, it's it's backwards. But mm -hmm. here we see that we had the 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 clone and the sponsor, and they both. <laughs> start with the same accent, <laughs> Scottish accent, and now the security doesn't know who to shoot, and then the the clone slips the the identity thing onto the sponsor's wrist, and then the security guy sees it and shoots the sponsor. Right. So this, I mean, you know, the clone is really determined. Yeah. <laughs> He's now got the yeah. sponsor, but he is determined <laughs> to be free. Let's just say he's determined to find freedom, you know, like he's not stopping. He's, he'll do anything. So he's seemed to fool the security guard now by slipping the identity thing on to the, the sponsor. As soon as the ego finds out, the memories are transferring, spreading, part of like, like unifying, way beyond the limits that the ego had set up. It was just going to raise the bodies and give a little consciousness so it could keep the body parts to make the money. But as soon as it finds out that the memories are spreading, that consciousness is, is connected, kill them all. Mm. It's going to wipe out the, you know, a, a recall. And the guy's going, you're going to, millions of dollars of product, you know. Yeah. The, the threat to the ego, the ego is just trying to cover itself. So you can see 2,000 years ago when Jesus started speaking from eternity, that's why the ego was so enraged. You know, it hit its whole system and its whole world, all set up to exist as a separate realm apart from heaven and God. And then Jesus comes along and says, I and the Father are one. My kingdom is not of this world. Even the apostles were not happy with, you know, they were like the sons of thunder. They go, oh my God, no, no, I was going to have a high place in the earthly kingdom. No, my kingdom is not of this world. Mary Magdalene was kind of really tuned in to what he was talking about, but most of the apostles were were not, you know, they were thinking they'd get a good position in some kind of an earthly kingdom. But he was saying, no, the kingdom of heaven is within, and Mary Magdalene was saying, let's just wait, maybe, you know, Judas was so sure that he had power, he was going to take out the Romans and show his power and glory, and then Judas and the rest of the apostles would have a high place in the new government, and all those kind of ego things. But he was, that's why, the crucifixion was just like, the ego was so angry. How dare someone come and reveal the truth, the reality of God and the unreality of time and space, you know, so this, that's where the viciousness comes in. But now, now you can see with our two, uh, two clones that they've taken off the limits, they've never 
had sexuality, they, they live with a lot of limits and they come together and, and she says, the island is real, which ultimately is not true, but the second part, it's us. It's a glimmer of the idea that, that there's no world, there's no island apart from who we are in the mind. So that's huge. She says, the island's real, that she says, it's us. But now they have to make a decision because their buddy that, that helped them out, that liked all the mail order clothes and gave them the credit card and everything, you know, he had said, just go find yourself on a beach somewhere, which would be, that's our peace plan, salvation. Find a beach. But, but they, you know, he said, just go, you should just go and not tell anybody and just go live on a beach. But even that is still escapism, you know, because she's aware, you know, she was telling him, like she said to the sponsor, you know, there are the thousands of us that are imprisoned. And Jesus says that in the Course, as long as one slave remains to, to walk the world, the Son of God will not be free. So they've got to take that, that thing, they've got to face it. Do we just try to make a little haven of special love here? Mm -hmm. Or do we go for the good of all? Do we go for the salvation of everything and everyone, the freeing the Son of God from belief in time and space and the bodies. So they get, they're getting close to that point because from their perspective they've escaped the island, but she did say the island is us, and now they have to kind of decide whether they're going to go for escapism, which is those nine <laughs> chapters in the Course from 15 to 24 on special love relationship, <laughs> Or are they really going to go, you, this course will be believed entirely, or not at all? And if they're going to go for that, they're going to have to face the ego head on. Mm. They can't just go, go try to avoid and hide from security and from the ego. They're going to have to go right back to the beast. Mm. That's what makes it a classic. <laughs> they, they've got to decide to go for a release or just try to make a haven and hide away from the big bad Dr. Mary, you know, and, and the islands. So they, they finally joined together, she says, you know, you go, and he said, we'll, we'll disappear, but after, that's very profound, mm -hmm. we'll disappear, mm -hmm. really. The, he's talking disappear, but, but of course in miracles wise, that's the disappearance of the universe. Mm -hmm. We will disappear. But after we face, <laughs> face the ego, with, after we allow the Spirit to use us, that's why we teach, that's why we travel, that's why we extend the message to teach what we would learn. It's just a mechanism of facing the ego, teaching what you would learn, strengthening the ideas of the Holy Spirit over and over by teaching what you would learn. Not just with words, but through interactions, community, relationships, extending love. Teach only love, for that is what you are. So there it is, that's the mechanism. And that is the mechanism of facing the ego. You need the energy of extending, like Matthew just had a, a trip to go and extend to the north, you know, that, that's an energy. I, I heard that uh, Lucy told me, she said, oh, I told him, said, where's your husband? He's, he's extending. He should be here with you. You're sick. He should be here with you. You don't understand how important extending is. Extending is everything. Extending is teaching what we would learn. Extending is strengthening and getting the energy in our mind and the alignment in our mind to, to go and face the ego. We're not going to be able to face the ego without miracles and lots and lots of energy that comes from alignment. We have to get charged up. So that's where they are right now, they're just, we'll disappear, but after. <laughs> after we go back and, and face the island, after we face Merrick, and they even got an invitation from the salesperson. You need to come back in, we need to rescan you. <laughs> to regrow your agnate, you know. Oh my gosh, there's even an invitation. <laughs> They're just accepting the invitation. Okay, back we go. Let's go right back into the 
the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Credit card. <laughs> That's how it's say, Here I am, come and get me. That's a credit card. All oh, part of the coin. And quickly. <laughs> Security shows up. Good scene right there. Pause it. Because the head of security, he looks over and sees her wrist mm. is stamped. And that gets him thinking about his life and his own imprisonment and being, you know, stereotyped and scanned and labeled. So he's now starting to wonder what what is it for? What am I in security for? If the prisoner has gone through the same thing that I've gone through in my life, what did I learn from all that? What did I desire? I desired freedom. I did desire to not be stereotyped and, and scanned and, and pigeonholed and everything. So you could see, even though he's arrested her, that's her way of getting, going to the island to meet up with her friend <laughs> who's going in to have a a rescan. They're both going in, but but that's a key point right there because now the security guy even is starting to see that her she's marked. She's marked, and he's he's been marked in the past too. And that's when you start to see your brother as yourself. You know, like wait a minute, why am I playing the role of the jailer and and imprisoning somebody? Is this really what I want? For my life, do I want freedom? So it's it's just beautiful. This movie is just packed full of so many little nuances and scenes about like the Holy Spirit is trying to show us. You want to be free, and and you're the same as your brother. So you want must want freedom for them, if you want freedom for yourself, because you're not different. You have to want the same thing for everyone, and and this is movies showing it like big time. My name is Lincoln. Lincoln was the president of the United States that freed the slaves. <laughs> he, 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 he's known through history as Honest Abe, very prayerful man of all the presidents of the United States. He said, no, enough of the slavery. So it's, they slipped that I think in there with the whole <laughs> My name is Lincoln. <laughs> I'm for freedom here. <laughs> The ego made the world, the ego made all the bodies, and then the bodies and the planets and the spheres all move according to the ego until mm -hmm. the mind gives it back to the light, to the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus was an example of, of that connection with the Holy Spirit, with the light, healed the sick, raised the dead. But until that point when, when the ego is transcended, then all the puppets, you know, see, they all seem to be, had their little jobs and, and didn't even know there was a light, and didn't even know there was anything beyond the little world that they were living in. But now, as they go back in to make the direct hit, to take down the holographic uh, ventilation system, and then the light, you see the light just streaming through there. What is and the music they play here, this is the most spectacular kind of scene with music and light to, to really show, set, set all the captives free. Let no slave remain, let no prisoner remain to walk the world. It's just a 
huge ending. I remember seeing this the first time it was on the big screen, and all the lights screaming in, and my tears. Oh, <laughs> ah! oh my God! <laughs> it's freedom. It's a symbol of freedom. Three hours, three minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good movie to help us not take anything too serious. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it just gives like huge context to things when we're tempted to get concerned about the body's future. Then this is like. Jesus saying, be not content with future happiness, for it is not your just reward, for you have cause for freedom now. Mm. That's a pretty big one, letting go of future happiness. That's, that was our main goal for a while there. Now it's like, mm, show me the moment, show me the moment. Show me the holy instant. Yeah, that's the, the prayer. My daughter used to watch Temptation Island. <laughs> it reminds me of the, the island in the movie. That was the future. Yeah. That was you know, promised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up watching, back in the day, it was Ricardo Montalban, it was called Fantasy Island. And every episode was about people going through all their fantasies. But yeah, this one, this movie puts it into context. You want to go to the island and it's all about the future, escaping contamination, going to paradise, you know. The paradise idea is kind of, can be used by the ego in a kind of a sneaky way. As long as it puts it off in the future, then it tries to build a strong case for future happiness. So it's more like you just have to kind of sink inward and go, like in, in an invitation. I like that part too, because I guess Lena, who was here, she was brought up in the weekend retreat, you know, I don't believe in God and I have so much rage and all those things. And I, was, I thought right away of that quote in the Course about, until you are willing to look upon the full extent of your own self-hatred, you will not be willing to let it go. So, that's a great line for, through the darkness to the light, mm. full extent of your own self-hatred. Because the temptation is always, ego always says projected, projected to time, projected to people, partners, weather, climates, you know, social conditions, society, governments, militaries, you know. It's always trying to project the error to time, because it made time up for that purpose, to be the, the target. It, and Jesus is saying, you know, you know, don't project the error to time, he says. Those are two of my favorite lines. You are not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction to the error. That's hinting at the end of guilt. You are not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction. And then he throws in, and do not project the error to time. So he's just saying, yeah, it's right, it's just, just the decision. But when you project it to time, you don't take that decision, like atonement, you, you fall for the, the blame game. Something in time is the cause, is the source of my upset. Or, I think the biggest one is that thing about you're not responsible for the error, you're responsible for accepting the correction, because that's 
that's where all the guilt comes in in the world is the, the mind forgets that it made it all up it becomes identified with the character on the screen and all the roles and everything that the ego has invented for that character whatever those roles are and then most of human development is that you have to fulfill the responsibilities of all those roles for future happiness and get back and to get back into heaven and that's a sneaky thing too because the only responsibility is atonement sole responsibility is to accept the correction that's what Jesus he, he didn't go for all the, the fake responsibilities he went for the the one that sets all the captives free you know the, the responsibility for the correction so yeah and I like that he comes right out and says that's the sole responsibility of the miracle worker the sole responsibility of the teacher of God is to accept the atonement soul s o l e only one that's that's pretty strong because there's so much guilt in relationships around you know you're not keeping up your end you're not doing you're not carrying your load you're not carrying your weight you're not fulfilling your responsibilities that's so much guilt it's just a whole trap like a like a whole sieve a whole intricate trap of trapping the mind and you're not good enough you didn't do enough you're not good enough you know that's the most people who do psychotherapy work they just come down to that place of unworthiness I wasn't a good enough this or a good enough that you know the guilt I wasn't a good enough son or daughter or husband or wife or or whatever it is it is you know you can fill in the blank but that's kind of the key that's the gateway is to start to realize that yeah you, know, you you have a, a guided part to play in, a, in the plan of atonement that's just to follow your intuition follow your guidance moment by moment day by day and you, you find joy in and that that's that is fulfilling the atonement everyone has their own part to play that's dictated by Jesus you know and, and everybody's got a given thing that they're supposed to do and then when you do it you feel great you feel happy fulfilled and when you get caught up in the time responsibilities then then it feels heavy We'll say great great you're happy but what about all the other people that you let down what about the, the starving children in Africa what about, you know it, the ego will come up with a few <laughs> things to point at but it's like in the end it's like no no it's it's a state of mind it's not about trying to solve something in the puzzle of the world it's it's about that so I think that's why Jesus said to the apostles and the women's corps you know I'm calling you out of the world he was literally calling them to come back into the mind you know like the sponsors come back and recognize who you are recognize the power of your mind recognize the freedom of mind what do you want freedom of the body or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have that you know it's such a huge huge calling it's a destiny you know to go for that mm -hmm. and then to not second guess yourself for any decision <coughs> that you think you made in the past because they were all part of a prearranged plan that you didn't mess it up you know that those were scripted even though it seems like well, at the time you felt like I'm making a real decision here but it's all scripted all those, I mean, those are just beliefs, you know. A decision that's pushed out of conscious awareness turns into a belief. Can you say again? A decision mm -hmm. that's pushed out of the conscious mind, pushed into the unconscious, turns into a belief or an assumption. 
So instead of saying, I don't want to do this anymore, I don't want to do that, it's more just, what is the, what is the belief okay. underneath that I believe is real, mm -hmm. that's dictating my character to say, I will never eat celery again, or whatever the character is saying, you know, on the surface. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is the, the belief underneath that's, mm -hmm. that's forcing that seeming decision, it's not really, mm -hmm. Decision. Decision is just to be settled in that case. I mean, in all beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Another word for belief is like assumption. So, underneath the seeming decision, there's this, there's an assumption underneath. And like the world is real. Yeah. That's an assumption. That's the assumption, and then the decision. There, somebody has to make a decision here, or. Or I mm. must make a decision, and I I need to accept atonement. Is really what and is called, and in question the belief really and, is the Hawaii thing in changing the world. Like yeah, Hawaii that's thing. when we think we have to make a decision to change the world, or somebody else needs to change for me something. to be happy. Mm. Then it's like and it's the best way if something happen, not happen. Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah. That's like you can't mess it up, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately it's, a, it's an eternal guarantee that that you're innocent. Mm -hmm. No matter what mm -hmm. you think you did wrong, Jesus is still smiling back there. Mm -hmm. It isn't so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't blow it. <laughs> guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> Signed, sealed, delivered <laughs> from heaven. Yeah. There is the line, I, I don't know which lesson it is, but the, you mentioned it on the weekend too, like the world is not real. And uh, um, when Resta received from all of the angels all the songs. And then there was this exercise that Javi was doing where he was saying, it's not spirituality, it's physics. But when he was saying, when he was saying about the grandparents and the fathers and the daughters and that we're all connected and then he said what do you think of it and you said it's a good use of physics and I thought oh yeah it is because it opened everyone's hearts but the one line that kept coming to me when he was sharing all of that and I don't know if it's if Jesus says it on the course but I heard you say it or eh, but when you were born, the world came with you. So, so the the reason grandparents and parents and all of it, like you are, it's all happened and it all came with you. Like the world is actually not real; it's not really there. So that's imp I think my the thought was like that's impossible. And the one thought that was coming because you were also saying that the body is always remembered or anticipated, and then I was thinking. Right, then, then that could apply too, that it's not that when I was born, I brought the whole world with me. Like in this moment, I am bringing all the world with me. And like all the memories that I have are all like, yeah, they're, they're, they're implanted, like in the movie, like they're actually mm -hmm. implanted, they're not real. Like I can forgive them, I can, like they're, they can be just forgiven right now, but it's not like you were saying it's not linear it's not linear like yeah or the light like it's not linear it's all happening right now all all of all of it is happening right now in my mind and it's it didn't actually happen and i can just release it with the spirit but yeah, yeah it kind of does that even that metaphysical thing of like being like a soul who comes and then takes on a body and is born. Because I always say it's like, if you're going to use the metaphor of like a, a soul, because Jesus equates the soul with the spirit, so he doesn't say there's billions or trillions of individual souls, it just says soul and spirit are the same. But in terms of soul, even seeming to be tempted by form, when you brought, when you came to the world, you brought the world with you. It wasn't, it wasn't there waiting for you to be born. It was, that's quantum, that would be Newtonian if a little soul could come and, oh, I want to be my parents, okay. 
Like Jesus is a happy soul. Okay, Mary, mm -hmm. Joseph, there you are. Bethlehem, oh, that's the, you know, it's not like a soul comes and then to a pre-existing world, because the teachings of the Course is there is no world outside the mind, or you could even say soul, so soul is spirit. So I always say if there was a soul, it has a backpack on, and then when it stops, it reaches into the backpack, <laughs> throws the cosmos out out of the backpack, because <laughs> that's just showing it's it's all mind. It comes from one thought, one belief in separation from God. Mm -hmm. That's what's in the backpack, and then it could play out in terms of galaxies and mm -hmm. all kinds of things. But it's, it totally flips the idea of from a human perspective of like a soul and reincarnating. You know, that's you know, that's more of a. It's still a very linear thing, reincarnation. As if you keep leaving, going, and coming back. I just keep seeing it on this thing with emotions. I feel like it's often a theme here. About emotions. I cannot really see it. Like it's, it is the decision first, and then comes the emotions and the beliefs and the history. And yeah. It, just to see the belief, the decision it's like, maker. Yeah, emotionally, it's like there's a lot of fear in the belief in autonomy of having an autonom autonomous existence apart from God. Yeah. Like Christ is not autonomous to God. The Father and I are one. God's the cause. Christ's the effect, and effect has not left the cause. So, yeah. God. Because I appreciate. I mean, because yeah. early on when, when I started joining with you, and I shared about all this abuse, and you were like, it never happened. You said to me, and then I had to go through. Oh, it never happened. And the forgive. Yeah. Truly. So really. Yeah, it was like you were saying. I got memories of like my, my grandfather, and yeah. you would bring things up specifically. Yeah. You do have to bring the darkness to the light. So you, yeah, you don't deny the the memories, but they do need to be reinterpreted yeah. in the light. But I appreciate that even I have joined, even if I share this little story. But she started sharing about having had a twin brother in the womb, and, and then he died. And then now she got in touch with all these emotions of missing him, of being left. You know, seemingly there was a separation, and it was very sad, and, and like feeling like there is a half of you missing. But when we joined, I started feeling these goosebumps, and like, well, I'm him, you know, like here we are. Mm -hmm. Just, and I, you know, I don't know, I, I feel like I appreciated this joining with you because I, it doesn't matter what the story is, you know, it is, it is not really true, like, you know, it just helped to, it felt like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to like, me. Story for you, but you start with the emotion, yeah. You start yeah. with what you're feeling, Just, yeah. Can I come back to the mind that decided? Or, um, yeah, allow yeah, emotion, but then see who I am, you know, the I am. It's because quite it's a, a trip, yeah. yeah. It's such a sad story, of, if you believe in the story of the human, so many years lost and left and missing or abused, whatever it is. And maybe it's also the symbol of separation, how you know, horrible it feels to be separate. It feels really like a split. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's helpful to tell the stories when they come up, when they are, when, when the mind allows it up, I think, the healing, mm -hmm. releasing the emotion. I was talking with Javi, saying, no, oh, Javi's doing the same experiment, mm -hmm. but if you see it kind of, this whole, and this whole thing is an experiment, and 
prayer and then listening and following. But experiment is experience in Spanish. Mm -hmm. The word experiment, they yeah, actually yeah. mean experience. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're experimenting with, with relationships, with community, with, with everything. Mm -hmm. It's is an experiment in opening to harmony, you know, to feeling the harmony and the connection. And and then you have to face the ego, we'll try to do everything to sabotage the harmony. You know, with this whole lead, listen, leader follower and all the different things that, that go with with even with governments, trying to come up with the best gov form of government, democracy, communism, you know, all the socialism, all the different concepts that the ego comes up with and and really going for that sense of connection and equality, but it has to come in the vertical alignment with the Holy Spirit. You couldn't possibly find equality without God's help. In a world of projected differences, you're going to, what, find <laughs> equality, you know, it, it just takes such a devotion to to pray and pray and pray and keep asking and listening and saying, show the way, show the way, what's most helpful here? With all the nuances and all the little daily logistics that come up, it's like that's the ego's world of separate specifics. Yeah. And then you want to use those specifics to be in alignment. So there's no personal entitlement, there's no personal responsibility, there's no personal consequences. You know, in the end you're going for transcending the personal perspective, which is just the egoic perspective. And I always like that about, like Gandhi, you know, what serves the whole? What serves the whole? I don't think he really wasn't doing those things, non-violent living, you know, just for India. He would say, you know, we want to free India of British rule, but he would, he had a bigger, much bigger uh, calling than freeing India. You know, it was, it was, the non-violence was something deep in his core that he really believed in and experimented with, yeah, with the British, you know, marching to the sea to break British laws, you can't make salt at the sea. He marched with a bunch of people to the sea to make salt. And, yeah, and they got, a lot of people got arrested and a time when they, they came to stand up for what they believed was right and true and then the British just pounded and beat them and everything, but they didn't fight back, you know. And then all the, the press was there too, to, to, to watch it and write about it, you know, to, to this sense of non-violence in the face of attack. You know, he really was inspired by Jesus, Gandhi, you know, he said, oh, I love that. And someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other cheek, kind of, like, it's fantastic, let's apply that. <laughs> you know, it's like, Exciting to see somebody, you know, from India, a Hindu, <laughs> taking the teachings of Jesus and let's apply that. Let's let's be defenseless here and and see the strength of it, you know. In a world that says no, you there is no def defenseless innocent. You have to defend yourself if you want to remain alive. <laughs> You know, and, and the teachings of Jesus were so far beyond that. So far, far, far beyond everything of this world. And today in the morning we are talking about that too, to the powerful to release all the past belief, but all the past belief to, I don't know who is it, but I will like, discover who is he now, without the past, it's like, but for whatever thing, for the food, for whatever thing, it's like, new mind, always, 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 and that is the beautiful, that we are going now in the community, because it's the pray, 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 pray all the moment, it's like, okay, I don't know what I mean in this situation, I don't know what is the most helpful for anything, but I would like to to learn how, how give now, how give, because it's in the given, 
everyone is feel that is fighting the heart in, in their heart now. So beautiful. When we went to QDS, we saw beautiful experience to everyone, one support to everyone, but it's not about to one rules. It's about to I feel so inspiring to cut one flower. I feel so inspiring to record it, but it's it's like a dance to everyone. It's like, oh, this is so beautiful. What's so yeah, beautiful? Marcel was saying, I, I felt inspired to do a, a session on Tribo Cristo, but I had no idea what I'm going to say. <laughs> and then Soren says, well, oh, here you can, well, here's some ideas and and then, uh, who was it, Raphael, Raphael, was like, I'll go cut a flower, some flowers, <laughs> and goes out to the garden to cut roses, and, and then there was uh, Daniel, Daniel from uh, Colombia, he was saying, oh, I think you could try this, he was giving all this tech thing. And, I can't help with that te tech thing. Yeah, I, but it's, it's, a, it's kind of a breakdown of, of linear organization, yeah and into going much more into inspiration, you know, just trust. Because uh, she's like, I don't know what I'm going to say, I didn't even plan it, I had nothing, no notes and everything. And then, yeah, that was Thomas. very spontaneous, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, they were on the phone before. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we woke you up before that. Yeah, yeah. That was, a, that was amazing. Actually. Yeah. Because you can apply it to anything. People could say, well, yeah, it's good for a broadcast, but be careful, don't, don't do a wedding. Because <laughs> yeah. the ego always breaks it into, you know, categories and don't do this, don't do this. Put some time and thought into things and yeah. Well, but, soon if uh, Jenny uh, has the idea to call you, and you were really on the phone, then then that was the moment I thought, wow, this looks serious. <laughs> 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 Maybe we're going to uh, get married. <laughs> Before that moment, you're like... <laughs> It's hypothetical. <laughs> it's actual. <laughs> it was scripted. <laughs> we read the script. <laughs> yeah, it takes such trust. But I also feel like the more you get into that trust, it's it's like this there was a movie they made back in black and white movie back in, I think it was maybe around 1929, you can't take it with you, mm -hmm. Lionel Barrymore, Grandpa, and then, and then all these people are living in Grandpa's house, and the whole movie is so good because they're, they're just all, he's so open to people should follow their inspirations, and they've got a couple guys in the basement working on fireworks, and then there's someone uh, the, the writing, a book. writing a book with using a cat as the a kitten as a paperweight for the <laughs> pages of the book and moving it off and putting it and and then there's one that's a dancer it's so happy she's twirling around mm -hmm. and dancing and yeah the whole theme was called you can't take it with you but it was about joy and inspiration and he did didn't talk too much about the Bible, but there were some references to, yeah, to the trust and the faith, you know. And the movie that we saw too, um, the last movie, the Time Set? No. No. Oh. To was Christian movie? The oh, the Forge. The Forge. forge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That oh, yeah. has a lot of faith, pray, collaboration. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah, we really, we, I guess we're starting on Friday, so we just had to stay open with the prayer for the movie, or the movies. Yeah. When people all come here and what, what the themes are, and this was yeah, a very deep metaphysical movie, mm -hmm. The Island. But yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes it's... Yeah, I think for some it's still leaving the world, like, 
we're still being in love, but feelings are strong calling. For awakening, but maybe being afraid and not knowing how to take the next step or what it is. Yeah. I think a lot of the people come, some of them are in that place. Yeah, we did, um, we did watch, was it some days ago, we watched this movie, uh, The Girl Who Believes yeah. in Miracles. That's that sweet. was really yeah. sweet. I mean, when I was watching that, at first she, she finds a dead bird, then she prays and the bird resurrects and in her hands and flies off, then she, there's a situation where a dog is hit by a car and killed and <laughs> laying there dead and she goes over to the dog and God through her raises the dog back and then she just, it just, I would, when I first saw that I was like, wow, <laughs> where is this thing gonna go, you know, and she was like raising the bird and then the dog and then, then other people, you know, started to come to her front yard and, uh, and she was just so happy and in such joy and then that was going on and on. But I never expected it to go where that movie went at the end. <laughs> that was like way past what I thought somebody would put into a movie. I just with Jesus, <laughs> uh, first a light showing up on the water and then then Jesus in blue jeans and a white t-shirt and then then he was in his full yeah. robe and you know, <laughs> oh my God. But, it's like we're in Europe, you know, this is the place where the, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, there's been a lot of things that happened over in Europe to turn people off the to, to Jesus. Good movie. The Fountain. The Fountain, oh yeah. Anna loves that one. <laughs> yeah. That's the one that changed everything for me. Well, that's, that's good too. That's very, very good. The Huge Fountain, La Fuente de la Vida. It's like many lives, like all happening at the same time. Yeah. Oh. And that the wife is sick, and then he is trying to find the solution for the disease and he, mm. in in the in the medical model, mm. and then he's forgetting. And then she's she saying, come. finish it, finish it. Yeah. Finish it. Mm. Mm. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is the tree of life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some very graphic scenes in that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. There's something coming up I'd like to share. Um, I just felt, when, when I saw, saw you yesterday, I just felt this joy of seeing you again. I felt so, it was just so, so much actually. And then I got paralyzed. So I just so much wanted to go and hug you when I met and, and you appearing when, when I saw you down at the terrace. And I just had this uh, experience, uh, very intense, of, uh, of just these evil thoughts or something that just paralyzed me totally. And uh, yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to share it because I can see that it's 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 a kind of a wall and it feels it feels difficult because I do feel um I just feel my heart open when I see you and experience you and I remember that from five years ago when I saw it first time. And um, And, and yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we've talked a lot about bodies, and, and, and I, I don't know if there's something that's a kind of a focus on the body or something, and then it just confuses me <laughs> somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know. This is just a lot of confusion in my mind. But I, I just felt so happy to feel this mm -hmm. joy in this. I felt really joyful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's more like a childlike 
Yeah, it just brings up all these, uh, all these blocks, all these, you know, like, no, well, you can't, you can't do that, you know, you can't do it. Like Vanessa just goes in, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's what I wanted to do that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see, like, you know, I can't do that. It's just that like this, this, this person, this personality is not doing that, you know, it's just, you know, no. No, no, I'm, I'm controlled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's this old one. So just let go. So it gives you a hard time. And that's to show you the way. <laughs> and that's to just show you the way. You perceive her. So Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>